So I'm Shane Cash and the Tennis Ninja, and we're gonna teach the Tennis Patrol boys how to hit a tweener today. Woo! Here we go. What's up, tennis fans? Got another collaboration with Tennis Patrol and Tennis Ninja. Last weekend at our USTA 4-0 tennis match, our last match of the season. <laughs> it's not. Was it, it wasn't our last match. It wasn't our last match of the last season. Match. But it was the last match that counted. It was the clinch. last match that counted. And we had to clinch this win to take the whole season. And it was all up to Shane to come and save us. Just so happens he hit an incredible shot. It, it was a tweener. And it was amazing. And we all saw it and witnessed it. So we just were sad that we didn't get it on the camera. So today we got him back. And he's going to show us how to hit the tweener because we we're all blown away. All right, so guys, for the tweener, there is multiple um, progressions in order to be able to hit this shot. Number one, you wanna make sure you get right off the bat is the grip. You wanna make sure you have a continental grip, guys, which is the serve grip as well as the volley grip. You wanna learn actually how to hit this shot like this on the side of you, and you're actually gonna do a pronating move, which is very similar to the serve. You just only do it down here. So you wanna learn that dexterity with that grip in order to flick that racket in the contact point to hit the ball. Number two, guys, is the contact point. You wanna make sure that the ball is hit in the right spot when you go between the wings. When you got, try to hit the shot for the first time, I see your players all the time go to the baseline and they try to hit it right away. That is a no-no. That is a confidence rejector. That's gonna make you not wanna hit this shot. So you wanna keep it fun, but you also wanna build confidence. So in order to hit the tweener, once you have the grip, you wanna make sure, guys, you master the contact point, which is actually right here. It's slightly behind you, which is actually going to require you to run over the ball in order to actually hit it and make the racket face up. So step one, you take a ball and you basically space away from the net like this with the continental. You drop the ball next to you, slightly behind your foot, and you just make contact like this. So you want to make sure that you just get the contact point slightly behind your foot with the racket facing up so you can clear the net. Once you have mastered this contact point and you feel comfortable with it, then you actually transition to the between the legs part. So what you're gonna do is exactly what I just did, except you let the ball bounce at least three times. So you can kind of see where the ball is in terms of height and you feel comfortable walking over it. So I'm gonna demonstrate here. So I'm gonna drop the ball. It's gonna bounce like three times with my racket up. And you kind of saw how I walked over it there. So you wanna make sure Again, the contact is in the same spot as next to you. Your only difference is now you're actually gonna go over the top and make that racket also view that same contact point. Number three, now you're gonna actually try and run the ball down. So once again, doing this and this, you're gonna wanna spend like a lot of time doing this. You don't wanna just progress right away into the actual hit. Once you have done those two things, you're actually gonna attempt to run over the ball. So you're gonna do a three bounce again but you're gonna to toss it a little further in front and a little higher to make it kind of feel like a lob. So I'm gonna run the ball down, I'll demonstrate again. You're gonna to toss it, let it bounce three times with the racket up. And on the third one, kind of shanked it, but you can kind of see the contact I'm going for, right? You wanna make sure that again, this is consistent in every single attempt you have. And the last one, once again, you've done this. This right here, I personally spent maybe like 10 minutes alone just doing this because that's how you learn how to get comfortable setting up your racket and getting the contact point. Now comes the real one. So you're gonna actually try and toss the ball. You're gonna get it in one bounce, like a realistic point, or you can have someone feed you. And the difference here with this one versus everything else we've learned, you gotta get that racket up here in front of you. That way, when you swing, you actually have momentum to build into your shot and gives you the power you need to hit the ball all the way from the baseline. So I'm gonna demonstrate, and we'll see kind of how this goes. I'll give it one bounce. Kevin, if you might want to move out of the way, just in case I shank it down the center. And it'll kind of look something like this. It's it good. <laughs> so guys, that's basically how to hit a tweener. Again, feel free to give me comments if you think I got to explain it differently. But other than that, that's how I learned it. And I guess we'll turn it over to Kevin now, who's actually going to give it a shot. <laughs> now, Kevin's actually an expert at hitting a different type of trick shot, which I am terrible at. He actually can go behind his back like this, which is actually very this similar. This one, I just know this one. And he knows this way, which is actually similar in terms of dexterity and contact point. It's just going to feel a little bit um, dyslexic for him because everything's backwards. But we'll see kind of how he does it here. All right. So, Kevin, if you want to go ahead and drop the ball on the side of you here and okay. just kind of imitate that contact point. Feel free to let it bounce two to three times before you actually hit it. Oh shit, wind. 
<laughs> okay, so you want to make sure the contact point is behind your More body. Behind. So that was slightly okay. out in front. Okay. You see how Kevin's trying to get that progression right now? So like this is very common actually with people who learn a tweener for the first time. Hey, there we go. So you, that one, he got the racket in the right place and his contact point was slightly behind him. So he accomplished step one. We'll move to step two now. So now, Kevin, you're going to do that exact same thing. Okay. But this time, you're going to let the ball bounce. And feel free to not have to drop it too high. Yeah. You want to drop it around shoulder height okay. and just let go with the racket up. And then let it bounce at least three times so okay. it gets to the correct height. And now on the third bounce, try to walk over it and just okay. flick it like you just Do you choose did. which foot you want to go higher on when you're shorter? Um, that is personal preference. Okay. But I actually mostly lift up my left foot since my right foot is dominant. Okay. But you can use whatever foot you're comfortable oh, with. Oh, man. Oh, pressure. <laughs> I, did, I didn't do it. So a... did you guys count how many bounces that was? That's three. I guess he forgot Coach Shane's instructions here. <laughs> that was two so only? Was that only you two? You want to get at least three bounces. Okay, okay. And then uh, feel free. You don't have to toss it yet because yeah. that's, that's like step three. Yeah. Just let go okay. from like shoulder height and then just try and walk over it. One, two, three. There it is. So you see how the trick to the third bounce, why you wait for bounce number three, is that ball gets low enough that you can get comfortable with the contact point, as well as how the racket flicks when you're actually trying to get that ball over the net. I think I'm gonna go the other way, because I feel like this is, I gotta go yeah. up on that. Yeah. yeah, so if the preference is to lift one foot up because you have more space to flick the racket, yeah. then absolutely, by all means, go for it. All right. It's all a preference, three bounces. Hey. Not bad. So I like that. He did take his time kind of walking up to that ball though, but he did a good job on getting over the top of it and getting that racket in the right spot. Not bad, because that was actually the first try with no editing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I guess Bao's going to give it a try now. Okay. So that, that looks too easy already for you. So you can go between the legs now. Okay. I got this. Okay. Try one through the legs with a three, two to three bounce. So he did two of two, see? So like that's a two, two bounce. Two so well. you want to give yourself enough time you did, you to kind of process too. yourself hitting it. Yep. That's let two. it bounce one well, time. Work. You're bouncing at so twice, So Bao is a two bouncer. Two, three, there. Oh, okay, you're, you're progressing <laughs> fast, man. Okay, so now you're on third step where Kevin is. So from here, you toss it again three times, but give it more of a realistic kind of feel. Toss it high, toss it towards yeah. the baseline, try run it down, but go three bounces. See if you can time it. Okay, that's too close to the service line, but let's see if he goes for it. <laughs> so you see what happens, guys, when you have too much time to actually think about and set up? That's where the worst tweeners happen. The ones that are the best are the ones where you feel like you don't have any time at all to hit it. But you've done it enough times like this, you can feel the racket move. So you want to try and get it like kind of closer to the baseline. My wrist can actually hit. Yeah, that's a good one. Two bounces, two, and oh, yeah. oh, here we go. Okay, so now if you want to move on to the real one, try it in one bounce. Ah, gotcha. So Kevin's already on boss level, or uh, Bow's on know. boss level already. I think my wrist can hit my, my jewels too. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start at the service line, yeah. and you're going to give it a nice high one, but more towards the baseline. Run it down with your racket up like this, ready to go. Then when you're ready, lift the foot up and just give it a swing. I think once you're... Oh, first try! Your wrist, your wrist will stop. Tennis patrol in one try. So you'll stop and it'll probably... <laughs> I want to I wanna say I appreciate Shane coming out, teaching us this. Um, it's something that you don't think you're ever going to learn, so... And he broke it down where it's very easy for us to understand. And yes. not many people yeah. do that. Thanks, man. Oh, no worries. <laughs> Thanks for having we me, man. appreciate Tennis Ninja. Guys, go check out uh, Lokahi Tennis. We have a summer UTR series we're going to be running out in Kailua. Um, play days. So basically, it's a non-elimination format. The community is all invited to play in it. Guaranteed get at least two matches throughout the weekend. Set up for you, scheduled for you. Um, we also have a college tennis junior camp coming up in July with three Division I college tennis coaches. So any aspiring juniors out there that's wanting to play college tennis or just learn from guys who are in the field as well as just get some good tennis to practice and get learning and getting better, come check out Lokahi Tennis in July, guys. It's going to be good. Awesome.
Aloha, guys. Have a good one. Tee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shane, I know when you hit this amazing tweener, uh, you guys had lost the first set, right? So what happened in the second set? What was the score in the second set? And what, what, what changed to the game after you hit that tweener? Gosh, um, well, first of all, I mean, like, we totally had that first set. Sorry, Wall Club guys, but like, <laughs> but no, um, no, it was, it was close. It was a hard fought battle and we just missed that first set. Um, in the second set, the momentum was clearly like 50-50, but we just could not break through. And we needed some kind of piece of inspiration, I thought, to like fire us up. Because we were a little bit low energy as well, because we thought we had the first set. Um, so what happened was, there's one point, I think it was like at 2-1 or 3-1, we were up a break. We just got it. And we were determined, we were like, I think I was serving, and I was like, we're going to get a hold, Matt. Like, we, we need this, we can position ourselves for the second set and tie it up. So like, there's one point going on and our energy was really high. Uh, my partner went for a volley, coach volley. I was like right next to him, kind of like this. And he totally missed it, like just let it go. And he was like, yours. And I was like, okay. So then <laughs> I ran it down and then sure enough, it's like by the baseline. And I'm like, okay, there's really no other option but this. So I'll just do it. Yeah. And like, I just flattened it out, hit it as hard as I could. And I got a little lucky and I stopped the yeah. net. And then the wall guys missed yeah, the volley. Yeah. I, I um, saw it. And that was it. Like, I thought the, I let out a big come on. Every court heard me. <laughs> and uh, that was that was the real momentum change because then yeah. we could feel the energy on the other side dropped a little bit. Like, the belief mm. was all of a sudden, like, kind of taken out of them for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So my partner and I just capitalized, and we just pushed hard, and, and then we tied the third set up, and we eventually won the tie break too. So nice. One of my more memorable doubles matches I've had in a long time, for sure. Yeah.